Hey guys, my name is Niall, and I love creating photorealistic cinematics than the Unreal Engine. Go. Now this project took me roughly two months to complete, however it would have taken me a lot longer if it wasn't for the power of the Unreal Engine 5 and a couple other pieces of software which we will be talking about in this video. I utilized a lot of tricks that I have picked up from the past experiences and I plan to share them here today so you too can create cinematics like this to share with your family and friends. So no matter what skill level you sit at, I believe this breakdown will benefit everybody. Before we dive into Unreal, let's explore the most important part, the idea behind today's cinematic. It was around this time last year, DICE had just announced their next Battlefield title, Battlefield 2042. And after binging some trailers and old cinematic content, I was recommended this video. Luckily at the time I had just finished my very first Unreal cinematic and seeing this provided the perfect inspiration for my next project, to recreate an old Battlefield trailer using the Unreal 5 engine. For this project I had to figure out how I was going to animate characters, what 3D models I would need and how I was going to build my environments. The pre-production pipeline looks something like this. I would kitbash 3D models from the Unreal market and other 3D websites. CG Trader and Sketchfab are good places to start. I would then take those models in the blender to be cleaned and textured. Those models would then be sent through a website called Mixamo which uses an AI to rig and animate your 3D models and finally everything was added into the Unreal 5 engine ready to be filled. I always start my projects with a basic blank gaming template. That way my viewport is clean with unnecessary items. The starter content is activated and you can select ray tracing if your hardware supports it. Laying out my scenes always starts with basic shapes with the goal to experiment with different layouts and ideas. This way things can be changed quickly if I don't like it. Also be sure to switch the top and side views to ensure your walls are placed accurately. To add a floor I use the landscape tab to generate a platform but you can adjust the size and resolution accordingly to your project needs. Lighting is a step which I save for last but I generally like to get something quick, dirty setup in the beginning. The direction light is a simple tool to use, just adjust the rotation angle of the sun to dictate your shadows. To soften your shadows, adjust the source angle. You should add atmosphere to your scene by going into the visual effects tab and dropping in the height fog. As this is a desert environment, I went with an orange colour and adjusted the sliders drastically. Using the directional light, fog and HDRIs are going to be key to achieving the look you need for your cinematic short. To capture your scene, simply click the cinematic tab and add a master sequence. You'll notice that we don't have a lot of options, so to fix that, switch your perspective mode to cinematic. Now we can add our golden ratio grid, which photographers use to get a more appealing image. This is referred to as the rule of thirds. You can enable the letterbox to get an idea of how your image will look in a cinematic set. Now let's add a camera. The main settings which you should learn include the f-stop, depth of field and focal length. These are vital to caption your characters and scenes in the best way possible. Knowing what focal length and what depth of field to use in different settings will make your work look more professional. With our character added, you will notice that the animation is not playing when we scrub through the playlist. What we need to do is click our model, drag and drop them into the sequencer, click the animation tab and select your animation. Okay now let's adjust our camera settings. The f-stop or aperture can be defined as the opening in a lens through which light passes into the camera. Think of it like the retina of your eye. Different focal lengths will achieve different results. For example a 15 to 20 focal length will create a wide image perfect for interior designs. 35 to 50 is normally used for talking heads with a shallow depth of field. 80 to 100 can be used to focus on objects and characters while creating a blurry background giving a cinematic look to your subject. For now we will stick with 40. As our character is moving we need to animate our camera. Simply go to the start of your animation and add a keyframe for the transformation and rotation of your camera. Scrub to the end and position your camera and your keyframes and adjust if needed. Without wasting any time we now have our first scene 80% complete. All that is needed is story. What type of environment is this? Is it run down, war torn or is it a well kept and preserved city? 
Asking questions like this will direct your decision making when decorating your environment. To decorate my environments, I use the Quixel Bridge. Simply go to Tutorials and select the Dusty Middle East package or any other package that best represents your project. This part of the process will take most of your time and it's always best to work from references. That way you will create a realistic environment. Start by adding texture, then 3D objects, and lastly decals to add the final spice. Decals are a great way to get lots of detail for very little effort. Be sure to scatter them around your scene, and I like to think of this process like working with clay, with the final details coming in last. To render out your project, click the clapperboard icon. Select the JPEG format and set your frame rate to 24, as this is the standard frame rate for film. I export in 4K and then downscale, but you could export a 5K image and downscale the 4K if needed. Compression quality is set to 100. The warm up frame count is set to 100 with 3 seconds added to delay before warm up. Now simply render your image and save your project. Post production is the process of editing audio and visual materials into final film. An editor will take and assemble footage shot by shot, adding music either composed or licensed, and finally incorporating visual and sound effects. These elements are woven together to create a final composite. For our post production, we will be using a free editing software called DaVinci Resolve. Here we will add our rendered plate, composite any effects that are needed, and finally color grade our image. In the color tab, select a node and hit Alt S. Here you can adjust highlights, shadows, and contrast to your liking. Color grading is an entire art within itself and is what will dictate the mood of your film. So don't be too disheartened if you can't get the look and feel that you want straight away. Experiment, take a break, come back, learn, and readjust the color. It's all part of the process. Thank you for watching everyone. I hope this guide will help you to create something special. To see more videos like this, consider leaving a like and subscribing. Take care folks.